This is the third video that goes along with my Stickman physics lessons on acceleration and acce the acceleration equations. And during this video, you're going to learn about what acceleration is and how it's different than constant velocity. You're going to relate time, distance, and velocity to that acceleration. Uh, you're going to interpret the direction signs of velocity and acceleration, and that's going to tell you if you have acceleration or deceleration. Then you're going to make, be able to make a givens list from a word problem, pick the right constant velocity or acceleration equation, and then successfully work that problem. So here's the different variables you have in this unit. The last unit you saw V, which would have been meters per second, and the unit abbreviation was meters per second, for that was for velocity. We used it for speed too. Well, now we're going to have a changing, because we're accelerating, we're going to be changing that velocity. So we're going to have not a V, we're not going to use V anymore, we're going to use VI for, for initial velocity, because you're going to change, it's not going to be the same throughout. And it's still going to be meters per second or M over S. And then we're going to get the final velocity, so we're going to use a subscript F, the F to, to represent the final. Um, and that would still be velocity, but just the end velocity, meters per second, and the abbreviation for that would be meters per second slash m slash s. Um, and then we have time, t, seconds, and s is a abbreviation a for acceleration, meters per second squared, also sometimes seen meters per second per second. So that abbreviation is m over s squared or m over s over s. And then we have displacement or distance, which is x, and the unit is meters, and the unit abbreviation is m. So this can be important, knowing your abbreviations, making a, making a, maybe a note card would be important. The quicker you see a number like 5m m slash s, you know that's velocity. And then you're going to look in the question and decide if it's initial or final or if it's just constant. The quicker you can do that, the unit abbreviations help, like the quicker you can um, be successful with the, the problems today and then throughout physics. Okay, so look at the animations of constant velocity compared to acceleration. And now I'm going to ask you these two questions. So does acceleration mean you are faster? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. You answer that. And then if not, what does it mean? So take a look at these pictures. Is the guy on the bottom who's accelerating, is he faster the whole time? Is he faster just at the end? So the answer should be no. Um, the one on the bottom is starts slower and, and the one on top is going faster at the beginning. What it means is your velocity is changing. So you have, if you have a positive acceleration, you're getting faster. And if you have a negative acceleration, you're getting slower. So let's look a little closer at some of this. Um, just remember, in any question, acceleration does not influence or describe instantaneous velocity. If you have a really, really high acceleration, that doesn't mean you're going fast right now. You might be going really slow, but what it does mean is that it's gonna, you're gonna be going fast in the future, and so it influences future velocity, but it has nothing to do with current velocity. So just be careful. If you see one million, billions, a gazillion meters per second squared, it has nothing to do. He can be going really, really slow. He might be going backwards. Um, anything else could be happening with actual velocity. Okay, so acceleration describes how velocity changes. You can speed up, you can slow down, uh, which we call de deceleration, which would be a negative acceleration. And also in the future unit, you'll see that you can actually change directions. If you change directions, since, uh, since velocity is a vector and that's changing, um, if you change the direction, you have just accelerated as well. You change the actual velocity without changing the actual magnitude of the number. So you'll see that later. Uh, when there's constant velocity, we can use variable v. So occasionally when, when I have a problem that I give you, if I ever ask you for the acceleration when you have constant velocity, the answer is zero. There's no acceleration if you have constant velocity. There's only one equation we use, v equals x over t. That's at least the main one for constant velocity that you've seen in, the, in a previous unit. So when we have acceleration, we got our vi's for initial velocity, our vf's for final velocity. This is still a single, a one single number, but in, in the equation, it's going to have the little subscript next to it. But it's represented by a single number. Like he went uh, 50 meters per second, that would have been, or he got to 50 meters per second from zero meters per second. The vf would have been 50 meters per second. And once again, not v. The only time you're going to use v is it says, I traveled this distance, I traveled this time. What was my velocity or average velocity? Or if they just tell you straight up, you had a constant velocity of 10 meters per second, well, that's going to be your V. Okay, so just to remind you before we look at the direction signs of velocity and acceleration, and if that means if you have acceleration or deceleration, just want to remind you to the left, we're going to call negative, and to the right, we're going to call positive. Um, and so that will be, that'll be important for our, our explanation here. You'll see that in future problems, we might change that up. For now, let's keep everything the same. And then your problem sheet that you have in front of you, if you downloaded the, um, if you downloaded or have the worksheet that I created for this lesson, um, 
you're going to have to fill it in like this. So you have a bunch of lines down here and what you're going to have to do. Okay. So if the, well, as you're looking at the picture, I want you to try to analyze it before you listen to what I have to say. Um, so you're going to pause it over and over and over. So you have a positive velocity and you have a positive acceleration. What that means, the positive V means you're moving to the right. What the plus A means is that you're changing your velocity to the right. So you're getting more and more right the further you go, the faster, more fa faster, higher velocity to the right as you go. And so that motion is going to be acceleration. So I want you to look at all these different pictures and I want you to fill in these blanks as you watch the video and pause it. So there's the first one. We already talked about it. He's going to the right and he's getting faster to the right. So just watch that for a few seconds. V is to the positive. That means that's just because he's moving this way. A positive means he's getting faster this way. If you take a look. Okay, next one. Okay, so now we have a positive velocity. So he's still moving to the right, but look at what's happening to acceleration. This velocity is changing to the left. And so therefore he's slowing down. This next one, we're starting to the left. We have a negative velocity, but he's changing it to the right. So that negative is becoming more and more positive because of this acceleration, so he's slowing down. Now, we go ahead and we have a negative velocity, but we have also a negative changing velocity or negative acceleration, so he's getting faster and faster to the left, or you're becoming more negative. So once again, negative doesn't mean you're going slow, it just means you're going left in physics. You can be walking that way, or you can be going backwards. Walking backwards, it really doesn't matter, but you're going in the negative direction. Here it was left. Okay, so just to throw some all this up, and here's a bunch of the little pictures, the busy, busy pictures all, all at once. Um, the direction signs, if they are the same for V and A, you are going to accelerate. And if the direction signs are opposite for V and A, you're going to de decelerate. So hopefully you kind of noticed that when we were going through the last couple slides. So here's some questions to you. Here I have a little picture. There's a bunch of different motion going on. Which is which motion? In which motion is the direction sign for velocity negative but the acceleration positive? So pause the video, answer that question, and then answer the next one as well. So the, the one that the direction is negative, you're going left, but you're you're, you're starting to slow down to the left because your velocity is to the right. You're, you're changing velocities to the right is motion D. So that's the one where you're decelerating, but you're going to the left. What would you call motion as a sign of velocity negative, but acceleration positive? That's called deceleration. So he's decelerating in D. Okay, now I just want to tie the acceleration velocity to displacement to time and try to tie these things together because it's important for you for your conceptual view of this to get some of these questions right in the future. So we're going to start and I just want to say, okay, so the time is here. We're about to start and I'm going to show you what acceleration of five meters per second means. And I just want to remind you that that's, you're, you're changing your velocity by five meters per second every second. Also a note here, I'm going to pretend like all of a sudden you change your velocity by 10 meter or 5 meters per second every single time. Um, just, just note that, that you actually wouldn't be going 5 meters per second right here, this whole in interval. Well, let me show you what I mean. So right here where I have 5 meters per second, you actually would be changing the whole time. But let's pretend, pretend for the sake of conceptualization that you were going 5 meters per second during this whole interval. Well, you just traveled for one second. And after that one second, you just traveled five meters. So this five meters per second means that after the second, you traveled five meters. Now, what acceleration is going to do is going to tell you what's happening over the next second. And over the next second, all of a sudden, you went from you added five meters per second to that over one more second. It took you one more second. You added that five meters per second. And now you're going 10 meters per second. And if we pretended you were going 10 meters per second this whole interval, you'd end up covering 10 meters because you just travel 10 meters per second. The whole time your velocity changed by five meters per second in one second because that changed you from five meters per second to 10 meters per second. So you might need to pause this video and think about it for a second. Um, it, it could be a lot to handle, but it really will help your understanding if you understand what I'm talking here. Okay, so now you just travel 10 meters because you're going 10 meters per second, but we're going to accelerate again five meters per second. So we're going to go ahead and change our meters per second by five. And now we're going 15 meters per second. So what that means, so once again, notice how these intervals have changed by five every single time because of this. Then our velocity changes by that, but then that also has an effect on our displacement because of it. And it's all a result of time. 
So you're going 15 meters per second, so that means one second later you're going to cover 15 meters. And so by the time you went, you know, three seconds later, if you would have, once again, if you were going 15 meters per second the whole second and not increasing the whole time, you would travel 15 meters in that one second. So notice 5 to 10 is 5 meters per second. It took one second. That's where this other second comes from, or the squared. 10 to 15 is another 5 there per second one more second later and that's why the second squared and so that's how these, these all relate so hopefully that helps you a little bit out okay so if you are in my class you have an equation sheet that looks like this thing on the left and i had you printed out one day earlier um and if you didn't make sure you print it out because you're going to reference that the whole time i want you to add an equation equation to this because when i talk about acceleration equations i want you to think of four equations and not just the three that are on on this equation sheet but i want you to add the extra equation that's missing there and this is this actually could be derived from two equations these two equations right here if you ask me later on, I can show you how it's done, but they, they, they just derive this equation. So I just want you to write it on your paper, and I'm going to let you use your equation sheet on any quick quiz or test. And so if we have constant motion, we can tell constant motion is going on, or we can't tell the velocity is changing, we're going to go straight to the V equals X over T. Um, then if we can tell that the velocity is changing, we don't need to know that the VI and VF, but if we can sense from the equation that velocity is changing and we have enough variables, which you'll see in a second, we're going to go to one of these four equations, which are your acceleration equations. So it's very important to print this equation sheet out or have something. Here's a link to the one we have. If you follow that link in, in PowerPoint, if I provide that for you. And then all the variables, we talked about what they meant earlier. I'm going to keep on going past that. We're going to look at this main acceleration equation. The, the, the definition of acceleration is it's a change of velocity over time. But then there's expanded form. If you have initial and final velocity, well, the change in velocity is nothing more than the final velocity minus initial velocity over time. So this is the definition for acceleration, the changing in velocity over the time. If you solve for this, you get your acceleration, and your unit would have been meters per second squared. This is what it looks like on your equation sheet. Just note that this, this A equals can equal change in V over change in T, or A can equal VF minus VI over T. I use parentheses around some of these things just to help out with the calculations. So let's look at an example. What is your acceleration from rest? It, it takes you two seconds to get to 10 meters per second. So you started, you start with a variable with Givens list. You started from rest, so VI equals zero. Your final velocity is 10 meters per second, and it took you two seconds to do that. So we're trying to solve for acceleration. Well, with three knowns and one unknown, you can help. You can pick out the equation, and you run right to this equation. And when you solve it, you go ahead and you throw in your 10 for the VF. You throw in your 0 for the VI. You throw in the 2 for the T, and you get 5 meters per second squared. And this is where the knowing your units is very important because you, what I do when I'm doing my math is I leave off the units here, but I know that when I get my final answer and I use MKS units going in, I know that my unit for acceleration is going to be meters per second squared. And you'll get you'll 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 be assessed on that in a couple of different areas. So make sure that you know your variables and your and your your units on those variables. So once again, that's the same as m over s over s. So if I write m over s over s, that's that's on the multiple choice question. That that just means the same thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and I want you to, I don't look at the answer. It's hard not to look at the answer. It's right there. I shouldn't have put it there. Um, so just cover it up for a second and read the question and do the problem. And then after that, then come back and check the work. Okay, a car accelerates from, uh, from, from a traffic light and increases its velocity from 0 meters per second to 20 meters per second. It takes 5 seconds. What is the acceleration? So here's your givens. Car accelerates. You have to read the question carefully, and you have to say, okay, well, it's, you're going from 0 velocity to 20 meters per second velocity. So I have to have VIs and VFs. So you can completely tell because you have VI, two different velocities that you have VIs and VFs. And just reading the problem, because there's other ways I can write a problem where it could be a constant velocity problem, and it, and it could have two, two variables. But here, you're accelerating. You can tell you're accelerating. So you have a VI of 0 meters per second. You have a VF of 20 meters per second. It takes five seconds to do this. And now you're trying to solve for acceleration. So what you're going to do is, and uh, is going to find you're going to find that equation. And when you find that equation, you're going to plug in the digits. And when you get your answer, which you already saw, it was four meters per second squared. Okay, so I just want to revisit this constant velocity equation again. I want, can't remind you enough. I think on some of my quizzes and tests, we try to catch you off guard and throw a constant velocity problem in the mix of the acceleration problems. Uh, you'll see that in the, in the future units as well. 
So we're going to use a v over t equation, v equals x over t equation, uh, for example. So when would I need to use this equation and not the acceleration equations, which we're about to go into? If Sally ran 500 meters at 5 meters per second, so she's running the whole time at 5 meters per second, um, she never changed that velocity, um, so we would use this equation right here. Or if you just had a total distance and a total time, and you don't know if you're speeding up, slowing down, or whatever, you can use the same equation and you would be solving for the average velocity. Okay, so so you have these four equations we're going to look a little closer at, and this is where you're going to get good at the math. It's going to take you a little extra practice probably than today. Some of you might get it down today, some of you might need a little more practice in future le in future just practice lessons. That's what we're going to go to next in my class. Um, so the first equation, you know, we'll just go in with this. I want you to notice, looking at these different different equations, there's only five possible variables that you find in those equations. You find vi, you find vf, you find a, you find x, and you find t. Once again, these are acceleration equations, so you'll never have v. You'll have either vi or vf. Um, if you have three of these known and you have one unknown, it's going to lead you to one of these equations. So it doesn't matter, you can have three of any of these. Any three of these, and you've asked for one other one, that's going to lead you to the equations, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. Um, once again, you're never going to have V. It's going to be VR v or VF in acceleration equations once you read the problem and realized it was an acceleration equation. So we're making a givens list, and including, especially, especially including your unknown, maybe put your unknown first, what you're trying to solve for, in that givens list is going to help you pick up these equations. If you live out, leave out your... your your, uh, if you leave out your, um, your unknown, you're not going to pick up your equation right. So once again, you're probably going to have to do a little practice before that may mean something to you. And then all of a sudden, you're, you'll, you'll be asking me that question. But we're going to pick the right one. So let's take a look at this first example. What is the initial velocity of a train that takes 30 meters to get to 15 meters per second from a rate of 2 meters per second? So on your paper, I want you to write exactly this. I want you to read the problem, and from here on out, I want you to try to get ahead of me on the problems and then, and then watch the video. You're asked for the initial velocity, so you're solving for vi. It takes 50 meters. Since you see meters, it's not time. It's going to be it's going to be displacement to get to. You are getting to, so we're ending at 15 meters per second. So once again, it's going to take a little little time to get used to these word problems. Um, so we're getting to 15 meters per second, and at a rate of two meters per second squared. So what is rate? I don't know. Let's take a look. Oh, it's it's unit is meters per second squared. It must be acceleration. So that's where you know knowing your units is going to be very important in this in this lesson. So we look for our equations that have v i x v f and a. And another thing you notice is we don't have t. So anything that has t can be ruled out. We can't use it. It's, we don't have it, and we're not even interested in it. Like it's not even part of this problem. So we can't do any of these other four, three. There's only one equation that can work. Once again, if you have three knowns and one unknown, you're going to pick an equation. It's going to be a different one depending on which get which knowns and unknowns you have. So if we go ahead and continue on with this problem, I think some of that order is a little bit off. Um, we're going to rearrange the equation. You can plug in the values or you can rearrange. I don't care as long as you have the work whenever I ask you for the work. And we start off, we rearrange that equation, and it becomes this right here. And then we go ahead and um, just watch out because we're solving for vi, not vi squared. So after you do the math, you rearrange this, you have to subtract the 2ax from both sides. That leaves you vf squared minus 2ax. So vi squared equals vf squared minus 2ax. But then you have to get rid of the squared part. So you have to take the square root of both sides. And when you take the square root of both sides, that's when you get this. Then you can plug in your values. And the PowerPoint the orders off a little bit. That's why that little circle was there. And then you do all the work. And after you do all the work, make sure the square root is around everything. That's why I have these extra parentheses. Everything in here has to be square rooted. And so if your answer on your paper was 105, you forgot to take the square root of your final answer. It happens a lot. Be careful. We're solving for vi, not vi squared. And so we get to the answer 10.2 meters per second. Okay, so watch out for keywords. Um, this is going to be important as you're reading through word problems. Um, go ahead and take a second, and I want you just to write down what does each, what do each of these variables tell you? Like how fast what was it going? So it's going a new rate right now, but it was going something different. So it was vi. Do that for all six of these. Tell me, tell me what information it gave gave you. Is it asking you? Is it asking you a question about something? What did they give you? Okay, so how fast was it going is vi equals question mark. It's just a question about how fast. 
and it's a past tense, so it would be at the beginning. Think of initial as the beginning of a problem. Think of final as the end of the problem. So problems are going to have a time frame that they're going to go through. How fast will it go? That's going to be final velocity. An object starts from rest. They just gave you information. They told you the initial velocity was zero meters per second. So watch out for the word rest or from stop, from still, things like that. It's going to be information that's going to be useful for your given list. An object slows down. That just tells you A is negative. I don't know how fast it's going right now, but I know that it's going to be slowing its, its velocity. An object comes to a stop. That would be VF equals zero meters per second. A constant velocity. Um, that's not A equals zero meters per second. Con oh yeah, no, actually that's right. Constant velocity means that the velocity is staying the same, but that means that A equals zero meters per second, yes. Um, the, there's no acceleration. So constant velocity, no acceleration. And if I asked you what that acceleration one was, you would have to tell me zero meters per second squared. The velocity could be anything. It could be fast. It could be slow. It could be, once again, acceleration doesn't tell you about what the velocity is right now. It tells you that constant velocity acceleration being zero means it's not going to change from whatever it's doing right now. Okay, so um, you're going to get practice picking, picking from these, these, these formulas. You're going to do this problem set. Um, take a second, go ahead and do the problem set. And then once you're done with, with, uh, with the problem set, then I want you to come back here and watch the video and see, see the answers. Okay, so how fast was, is Tommy running after starting from rest and accelerating at 2 meters per second squared for 3 seconds? You should have come, came up with this Givens list. And that Givens list, so you see my work over there on the, the bottom corner, but I went ahead and did it, did it as well here. That Givens list will lead you to one equation. There's only one equation. What's missing from this is x. There's no x. So anything that has x, which three other equations have x, um, you can't use. It leads you to that equation. You go ahead and you plug in the values. Um, one thing I didn't mention earlier that I want to go ahead and mention, uh, this is the same equation as a equals vf minus vi over t. And if for some reason they're asking you for acceleration, sometimes it's just going to be better just to go straight to the A equals VF minus VI over T, just quicker, but same thing. If you do the algebra right, it's going to get you there anyways. So we get to the answer VF equals 6 meters per second. Once again, unit for velocity is meters per second. So if you have meters per second squared on your paper, change it. you got to have meters per second for it to be correct. Okay, next one. Car travels for 10 seconds at a constant velocity of 20 meters per second. What's its acceleration over that 10 second period? Okay, so watch out. This was a trick. Some of you probably already started writing a give, Givens list. Um, zero meters per second, it's constant velocity. That means no acceleration. How much time would it take to go from 10 meters per second to 35 meters per second and 50 meters? Okay, at this point in time, you might realize I'm not always going to ask you for the first variable in these equations. You might be asked for anything in one of these equations. So you just have to do the algebra to get to, to, the, um, to the version that you need to get to. So here's your Givens list, and you'll notice you're missing, um, looks like you're missing acceleration. So even though there's acceleration, you don't need to know it. And the only equation that doesn't have acceleration is that one that I told you to write on your equation sheet before. X equals VI plus VF over 2 times T. Sorry, uh, yeah, times t. And so you plug in your values, plug in your values, watch out, um, you know, vi, vf, watch out, this is a plus, and some other equation, there's, there would be a minus. Um, so, so we get to this, and I'm working the equation without rearranging first, because a lot of students end up doing that. This is just so you can check your work. Um, so I start doing all the parts. I would put the 10 and the 35, add them together, I get 45. I divide that by 2, I get 22.5. And then I get 50 equals 22.5 times t. t is in the numerator. It's not below a 1. So it can stay there. I'm just going to divide up the 22.5. But I'm going to go ahead and switch sides just so it's just prettier. I like to see the variable that I'm solving for on the left. So 50, divide both sides by 22.5, and you, you get this. And then when you plug that into your calculator, you're going to get 2.2 seconds. Once again, the unit for time will be seconds. How much should you accelerate when starting from rest and traveling 230 meters in 15 seconds? Okay, so you have your Givens list right here. Uh, you, how much do you accelerate? A equals question mark. Well, starting from rest, watch out that VI is zero. Once again, that's where why we took a second looking at some, some trick keywords to watch out for. And you're traveling 250 meters the whole time. Once again, meters will help you know that that's a displacement and not a, 
not the actual velocity. Also right here, you might be thinking some at some point under this lesson, well, is this a speed or is this a displacement? Um, is this, a, sorry, is this a, a distance or is this a displacement? So we're gonna go ahead and if it doesn't say in the problem, we're just gonna assume you're going forward. So we can use it. So if we're just using positive values all the way, all the way through, we're just gonna say forward. So, so this would be still considered, uh, you know, a, a, a displacement but it'd be 230 meters forward. If it's ever forward, I'll let you just leave it off the problem. And that's what you'll see me do here. So the last unit was the only time that you would, you'd be using like right, left, up, down, whatever. But um, from here on out, we're probably gonna go ahead and, and often we'll just think forward. Okay, so all these variables lead you to, you so A, V, I, X, and T, we don't have V, F. And the only one that doesn't have V, F is this equation right here. And then we plug in our values. And once again, I'm doing it the long way. I'm not rearranging it first, which I usually would do if it was on my own paper, just to help you with some algebra problems. Okay, so the first algebra problem you probably will have, I went ahead and put the 0.5 and the 15 together on the side. This is a number A's. I don't know. It's not a number. This is a, this is an actual number. This is something A. So when you get this part right here, I was hoping I had the next one. If Once you plug, plug these numbers together and 0.5 times 15, 15 square that and then multiply it by 0.5, you're going to get an answer and that's going to be how many A's you have. Well, you can't add an, a, this number to that. And in fact, this number would have been zero anyways. So, so you, yeah, we'll cancel everything out if you did. Uh, well, you just can't do it. Um, so you have this right here multiplied by A, this, this many A's, and this, this is just a plain out number. If this was ever a number, you'd have to subtract this from both sides before you can deal with this number over here. So just math, a lot, a lot of algebra problems that students that I've seen, they do that mistake. So I go ahead and uh, that's what I actually did. I did, I canceled this out because this was a zero and I added that. So zero added to, so it's not gonna make it zero. It's just added to this number, 112.5 A's. And then I'm gonna go ahead and throw, since A is not under one, I can just keep A on that side. I'm gonna divide out that 112.5 from both sides. And when I do that, A is equal to 230 divided by the 112.5. So you plug in the numbers and then you, you, you use SI, MKI, MKS units going in. So your answer is going to be that MKS unit um, for A is going to be meters per second squared. So it's two meters per second squared. Okay, I believe this is the last problem of the set. How far would you have traveled after starting from two meters per second and speeding up to two, 12 meters per second at three meters per second? So we're looking at this, how far have you traveled? And so that would be X, a displacement. You started at two meters per second and you ended at, you sped up to 12 meters per second. So VI was two, the VF was 12. And then they asked you, uh, you they told you, you were accelerating at, so at, seeing that three meters per second squared, this is telling you it's an acceleration. So that's gonna be your A. And now you pick your only equation. If you take a look, where are we missing? We're missing T. So your only equation that doesn't have T is gonna be this one right here. So you plug in your values. Once again, just kind of getting used to, this is where you would have made the mistake with the math. Uh, if you were going to make one. So once again, you want to make sure you're making those mistakes before I tell you you're going to make a mistake because a lot of you might make this mistake and you're not going to fix it unless you make it first. So always do the math first if you're watching this video. So when we do this, we want to we go ahead and multiply that 12 squared. It's 144. That 2 squared is 4. And then we go ahead and take the 2 times 3. We're going to make it that 6. This is 6 X's. It's not, it can't be mixed with 4. This is four. This is just a single number four. This is six x. X was ten. This would be sixty. It's not. It's not ten. But um. But yeah. This, this is six x's. So we can't mix these two numbers in. So we have to get rid of the four the way we'd get rid of anything added. So we'd have to subtract. And we subtract four from both sides. We now have one forty four equals six x. Now we can divide out the six from both sides. And then we're going to be left off with just that x. So one forty divided by six, and we get twenty three meters. So go to Sigman Physics. If you go through one-dimensional motion and then you click on um, the acceleration, the, the, the unit on acceleration, I think it's a second unit. There's zero, one, and then two. Um, you, at the bottom of the page, you're going to get extra practice, and that will be useful for your, for your knowledge. The more practice you get now, the better you're going to be.